This is a current limiting bulb. I have a video on my channel about what it's used for. Uh, its main purpose, in short, is to restrict the amount of current that occurs when an unsafe condition occurs, like a short or like you flash the wrong firmware on your ESC and it's it's letting uh, the sh it's shorting out basically. When you apply 12 to 16 volts to, to this bulb, it will pass between about two and three and a half amps. It will also light up, which is a clear indication to you that something is not right, and uh, and so that's fine. Now you can use this bulb to discharge your batteries, but the problem is that it, at two to three amps, that's in the ballpark of 2C for a 1300 milliamp hour battery. And uh, so it's going to take a little, a little less than a half hour to discharge the battery completely or to take it down to storage. Maybe it takes 15 minutes. I don't know. Anybody got time for that? So I'm going to show you something else. This is a 100 watt, 12 volt halogen bulb. 100 watts, 12 volts, and this is a 4S battery. So it's a little more than 12 volts, but I think we'll be okay. Uh, you'll notice I'm handling this bulb with a with a cloth. You're not supposed to touch it with your skin because the oil on your skin can heat up. It gets very, very hot and very, very bright when it's on. And the oil on your skin can make hot spots on the bulb and crack the bulb. I don't, I don't know if that's true, but that's what I've always heard. So, um, <clears throat> so this battery is at 15.26 volts. It's around storage voltage, roughly. The other thing I want to show you is this. This is a, a socket base for this style of bulb. I'm going to have a link to the parts that here uh, that I'm using uh, in the video description. And I have installed some XT60 connectors here. And just like with the current limiting bulb, this is this is the positive lead, okay? And it, the bulb is on the positive lead. The negative lead passes straight through. And we can just take this bulb and it just... The little prongs go right in there like that. Piece of cake. Okay. And then what let's do is let us get the current meter on here, the clamp meter. And I need to find someplace safe to put this bulb because, like I said, it is going to get ridiculously hot. And I don't want it to scorch my table. So I'm going to put it over here. And then I'm going to take this battery. I'm going to put this battery like so. Nothing happening yet. No worries. And then I'm going to take an alligator clip. And I'm going to short this. Now, I'm about to short this battery, which you may think is insane. I'm going to destroy the battery. But remember, this is a 100 watt bulb. It is a resistive load, and it is going to limit the amount of current that can flow. Now, it's going to be a big number. It's going to be a bigger number than this automotive light bulb, which limits us to about 2 to maybe 3.5 amps, and that's a safe level that will not burn anything up too quickly. But the idea is that that's, that's too slow for us if what we want to do is discharge a battery or get a battery quickly down to storage charge. So we've got this 100 watt bulb, which is going to let more current flow, but it's still not going to be as if I was shorting the battery. So let's do it. Here we go. And now you can't see a darn thing, can you? Uh, yeah, we're pulling about 10 amps. Great. I'm going to stop that. Woo, that was bright. Oh, my goodness. That was bright. We were in the ballpark of about 10 amps. And in fact, I've actually done the same test with a fully charged battery, and it is also in the ballpark of about 9 or 10 amps. So, we can pull 10 amps through this bulb. In order to have a more permanent and safe solution, we should probably find some way of mounting this bulb so that the heat and light that it makes are not a problem. There's no potential for fire. Uh, also, it's not just blindingly bright when you're in the room. There's any number of ways you could go about that with some kind of metal enclosure. You, you, you don't want the bulb itself to overheat. So you might put a cooling fan or there's, you can make it really as complex a solution as you want. Or you could just set it on the table here on top of metal pair of pliers and, you know, wait. But wait, there's more. Here we are at the charger and I just want to show you how I've wired it up. Here's the battery. It's plugged into the normal charge slash discharge lead coming out of the charger. And we've got this little adapter plugged in so that the light bulb is in line 
on the positive supply. This charger and many others like it have a function called discharge plus. Now let me explain to you what that is. The charger itself can only discharge at a rate of one amp. It, it, it has to limit that rate because when it's discharging it is essentially just converting the electrical energy into heat and it can only take so much heat. It doesn't have great big banks of resistors, a big you know 40 watt 50 watt resistor like you can you can buy them uh, they're, they're, they're designed primarily for audio systems like as, as a load for testing an audio amplifier when you don't have a speaker and there's these big honking like 8 ohm 100 watt resistors or something right it doesn't have any of those so when it dissipates the heat it can only dissipate so much heat before it gets too hot and then it has to stop so it can do an amp but in discharge plus mode you tell the charger I have put an external load on there, and that load is going to soak up so many amps, and then you, it, the, the charger will increase its internal limit, trusting you that that load is there. So you can set the current that it's going to use for discharging. In this case, I've set it to 12 amps. I just picked a number. But we know that if you put a dead short across this ba battery with this bulb in line, we'll pull about 9 or 10 amps at most. So setting this to 12 amps or 20 amps, it doesn't matter because as soon as you get to 9 or 10 amps, it's not going to go any higher. The batteries or the, uh, the light bulb's resistance will prevent that. Now what you certainly could do, this is actually a 12 volt bulb, but I'm actually putting as much as 16.8 volts across it. If you wanted to be a little bit safer, uh, by the way, I think the bulb can probably take it, whatever, but if you wanted to be a little bit safer, you could reduce that current by about 25% which takes you from a 4S voltage down to about a 3S voltage. So instead of uh, drawing 10 amps, you could say, I'm only going to allow it to draw, let's say, 7 amps. And then it would be dissipating about the same number of watts as it would if it were on 12 volts. Let's take that down to 7. Go, go, go. There you go. So now I'm going to say 7 amps. I'm going to discharge to 3.4 volts per cell. Now that's not actually a good storage voltage, but since this battery's already at storage voltage, I had to pick a lower number. You can pick whatever number you like. And then... There you go. So it's going to come up to about 7 amps. And away it goes. And it will automatically stop when it reaches the target voltage, which actually it is just about to do because it didn't have very far to go. So it's just going to ramp down slowly, and when it reaches the target voltage, oh, this will be a great example. It just ramped up and ramped right back down again. Perfect. So that is, that is how to use a 12-volt, 100-watt bulb to discharge a battery pack using either you could just do it manually by plugging it in with an alligator clip or you could take an xt60 connector and wire it back to itself a basically short circuit xt60 adapter uh, to, to, to use that to discharge a, a pack or or to discharge a pack using the discharge plus mode of your charger and by the way this reactor charger and all the reactor chargers have this mode but of course many other chargers have the mode as well the i charger and so on lots of them have this type of thing they know that they can't dissipate a ton of power so they give you the option to use some kind of external load to it now in this case i'm using these 100 watt 12 12 volt bulbs because they're cheap and they're easy to deal with you can also if you really want to go over the top you can get one of those big high power uh, resistors something like a I don't know a 4 or an 8 ohm perhaps uh, you'd have to do the math to figure out what current you wanted to target but uh, like a you know a 100 watt resistor or 250 watt resistors in in parallel you can build basically a, a, a load bank that lets you discharge and then you, you don't have to deal with staring at a bulb <laughs> a bright bulb but uh, but this is what I go with just because they're cheap and easy to get hope that's all helpful and happy charge happy charging